Live from Hazlitt, Michigan, welcome to this crosstown matchup between the Vikings of Hazlitt and the Hornets of Williamston. I'm Connor Clifford and I'm here with my partner Torsten Holland and we are ready to get this one started. Yeah, this is a very anticipated matchup. You got four and two Williamson, five and one Hazlitt, both with star players on their team. We got Brandon Allen on Hazlitt, we got Riley Lewis on Williamson. I'm gonna enjoy how this matches up, you know? Yeah, both of those two players previously noted, Allen and, and Lewis, they were both uh, on the LSJ Player of the Week. Uh, also to note in was uh, also Luke Sleeper of Hazlitt. Yeah, so um, both these players are shooters. You know, they both have great and outstanding, you know, ball control, and they both can hit the three with no issue. So, you know, it's, it's going to be good to see if, you know, maybe they're guarding each other, see how, you know, that matches up. Um, Riley Lewis, on the other hand, he hasn't scored below 27 points other than one game. So that's something to note. And on the other hand, we got Brandon Allen. He scored 30 points last game. He's definitely, a, you know, going to be a huge deal. It's going to be exciting. One thing to note is that these schools are so close together. Uh, most of these players uh, have seen each other at one point. A lot of them are really good friends, including Brandon Allen and Riley Lewis. They used to play together in the summer times. They've known each other for years. They're real good friends. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, and um, so here are the Hassel starters. We got Tahini, Allen, McCarthy, Sleeper, and Roblox. Then uh, we got Williamson starters. We got Riley Lewis, Cleaver, Cobb, Coral, and uh, Kodet. Kodet. And um, Hassel keys to the game. Um, you're going to get defensive rebounds. That's a big deal. Stop Riley Lewis on the outside and just stop, you know, shooters all around, especially perimeter shooters. Well, on the other hand, Williamson, all he, uh, all the coach had to say was stop Allen. That, that is how much emphasis is on Brandon Allen tonight. Uh, Hazlitt's coming in here, first place in the CAAC Red. Their only loss was to East Lansing, 79 to 70. On the other hand, Williamston has also lost to East Lansing. However, the score was much more lopsided, 78-37. They are currently in second place in the CAAC White behind Catholic Central. And here we go. Cobb won that. He's a six foot six freshman. That's Riley for three. He's off the mark. Roblox with the rebound. Allen's bringing it up. There's Sleeper, over to Tahaney. Roblox in, he gets two. Riley Lewis is gonna bring it up, trying to get something going for the Hornets. Being guarded by McCarthy. That was Perel off the mark. Good rebound by Sleeper. Off his foot. foot. Oh, Riley Lewis on the break. Look at that speed. And lays it in. Very calm and collective there. Nice job. Tahini bringing it up now. Got Allen. Allen a little pull up jumper. And that's what makes Allen so deadly, just being able to hit that shot from anywhere. And that's a foul on McCarthy there. Over to Cleaver. Williamson in motion. The travel and 23 Cleaver. Sleeper on the inbounds to Allen. 
Williamson showing signs of full court press, but they're going to lay off. Allen with the three. Ooh, air ball. Good effort by Roblock. Not able to save that one, though. This is McCarthy showing some pressure on uh, Riley Lewis. Ball screen by Porel. Lewis with a three. Just short. That's Cobb. Cleaver drives. This hand is it. Has a ball. Another note is uh, Cobb. Sean Cobb, he is a 6'6 freshman playing, you know, as a starter on a pretty old team here. So, you know, that's something to note. Maybe to keep an eye on throughout the game. Surprisingly, at 6'6", six six, he is not the tallest player on this team. That uh, award goes to Derek Nicholson. He is 6'7". So, you know, Williamson is a pretty tall team, but, you know, Hazlitt is too. You know, with guys being... You know, just as tall, it's going to be tough to, to even get some layups in. Probably going to be a lot of perimeter shooting this game. You know, especially with Brandon Allen and Ry Lewis out there. Wow, that was heavily guarded by McCarthy, but Ry Lewis still able to get that one up. Into sleeper. He gets two. Nice jumper there. Now, one thing I have noticed is Brandon, or Allen, Brandon Allen, has been heavily guarded. He's been man to man the entire time. It's going to be hard for him to break away here. Good rebound there. Last game for Hazlitt, it was a 90 to 80 point game. Very high scoring. Uh, Coach Smith was saying that uh, that's not because they don't play defense. That's not the case at all. It's because they are so fast with the ball. They pat, they press so much that it, every team gets so many more possessions. That There's way. McCarthy with the three. So what they're trying to do now is they're going to try and figure out a way to slow down the other side of the ball so that they're still getting the same amount of possessions, but their opponent is not getting as many. That's Cobb there. Yeah, nice. Very nice fade away there. Allen with the ball, bringing it up. Oh, well drives. oh, very nicely done. Right down the lane. Good move there, just off the mark. Haney bringing it down to Sleeper. Oh, good steal by Riley Lewis. Oh, long three there. Yeah, that was a little bit deep. Man, I don't short. know if that's the type of shot Coach wants him to be shooting. There's Sleeper for three. Oh, he knocks that one down. That's seven points for Sleeper in the first quarter. There's still three minutes left. We thought there was no better way to do that than to uh, put on the striped shirt and pick up a whistle and stop complaining about the officials and, and go do something about it. And there was guys that were nice enough to do it and volunteer their time when I was a kid coming through school, so I'm just paying it forward. Initially, I got into officiating because I was a coach and I wanted to learn more about our sport. Now, I officiate because I want to make a difference. You can be a referee. Uh, back in Hazlitt. Uh, Hazlitt up 16 to 8. Williamson taking the ball out. Oh, and Paul Fiorello just entered the game for number. For number two, Tahini. 
Riley Lewis goes in for the layup, not able to hit that one. Hazel looking to press. Allen for three. Ooh! He knocks on the trifecta. Nicely done. And that's the that's the danger of Brandon Allen. He can hit it from anywhere, anytime. Plus even with someone on him. Yeah, and his speed. It's just it's hard to match someone of that caliber. Just off the Mark Cobb there. Paul with the rebound. Brandon Allen able to draw that foul. It's going to be on uh, Perel. And then for uh, Hazlitt comes Redmond and, uh, for Sleeper. Now, another note is Redmond is also a freshman on this on this Hazlitt team. He is he's very tall. He's very fast. He is a he's a very shot. scrappy player. Yeah, scrappy player, you know. Nice job there by number 22, Roblox. Cleaver bringing it up now. Cleaver, a little jumper. He gets that one to go. Fiorillo taking it up now for the Vikings. Into Redmond. That's a little bit of a mismatch for him. Going up against the 6 6. For number 32. Nope, no shot. Oh, no shot. Just called the shot off. Oh, my He's bad. On the ground. Evan Block coming in for the Vikings now. Sitting down is uh, Redmond, who just came into the game. Lewis setting up top. He drives baseline, and he gets fouled. He's going to be shooting two. Viking foul on number five, Paul Fiorello, in his first, the team's third. Riley Lewis shooting two. Riley Lewis is kind of playing with a chip on his shoulder. He's uh, averaging almost 30 points a game, and he still hasn't received any offers from any colleges. He's trying to prove himself. Uh, and I think in the so far he has. I mean, he's averaging 30 points a game. Yeah, he's only had one game, and that was uh, against East Lansing, where he only scored 17 points, which is still, you know, only scoring like 30 points that game against EL, has scoring half the points for the team. It's just you know, not something to be proud of. Of course, East Lansing has a very good team this year, so you know, something to look at. Tahaney coming in now for Hazlitt. Allen puts up a little circus shot there. He's trying to draw the foul and not able to get it. Over to Cobb. Cobb there for two. That's Cobb using his height there. Very well done. You have to imagine that by the time he's a senior, he's going to be an all area, all region, all state player. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with, I'll tell you that. Roblox with the shot. And Trinkle's in there. Nice job. Good jumper. Lewis bringing it down the court. Oh, he shoots a long three. In and out. That's always so frustrating. Oh, yeah. Ooh, good move by Block there. Sleeper calling for it. That, mm. Double team. Yep. Good drive, Allen. Oh, just off the mark. It's a rebound by Kodak. About five seconds left. Riley gets fouled. He's going to be going to the line. Riley Lewis already knocked down two free throws earlier today. Knocks down his third. Oh. 
He's a perfect four for four. One second off the side of the backboard. So with the score, 23 to 16 has its lead. We're gonna take a break. You're watching a Hazel Media production. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Do you want me to start the stream? You start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the student broadcast program, visit nfhsnetwork.com slash SBP. back and it's about to start the second quarter. Score 23 Hazlitt, 16 Williamson. Very eventful first quarter. Uh, the leaders for Williamson is Lewis at nine or eight points, excuse me. And uh, for Hazlitt, Sleeper and Allen are both at seven. Right behind them is Roblox with six. You can only imagine that uh, Williamson over there is talking about how they need to slow down the Hazlitt offense. They're so fast on both ends of the court. Yeah, and you know, one thing I've noticed is that they seem to be putting a lot of emphasis on Allen. I feel like because of that emphasis, they're kind of leaving you know players open on the on the top of the arc or you know near the free throw line. And, you know, so I feel like maybe they need to even out their defense. I get that Allen is a very strong player, but it may help in the long run to even it out. Yeah, he is not. A, he is not Hazlitt's only weapon. Yeah, Hazlitt has. He's definitely the strongest weapon, but he's not. He's by far not our only one. And that's what makes Hazlitt so deadly. Sleeper, nice job there. Sleeper's now at nine. That's Cleaver over to Porel, over to Cobb. Coming in for Williamson was uh, Nicholson. He's uh, standing at six foot seven. And Cobb draws a foul. Cobb able to knock down the first one. That's so huge for uh, for a big man to be able to knock down a free throw. And now we have McCarthy coming in for the roll block. And he hits two of two. Williamson has not missed a free throw yet this game. That is so crucial in games that are tight like this one should be. Every point matters. That was a travel on block. I mean, Williamson ball. Cleaver's going to bring it up. One thing to note, Riley Lewis is not in the game right now. He's taking a little break. Cobb for three. Ooh. The big man can shoot. Like I said, he's a freshman to keep an eye on. Just imagine him as a senior. He's going to be a major weapon for this Williamson team. Yeah, years to come. He will be something else. Cleaver looking to push into Cobb. Not able to hit that one. That's off Cobb, going has the way. Inbound sleeper. Looks like Tahaney's gonna bring it up now. This is Toomey guarding Allen right now. Sleeper, sleeper in the corner. The, ooh, air ball there. Oh, but he gets the rebound after a tip by Tahaney. Toomey looking to push over to Cobb. Cobb brings it in, nice drive. Off the mark. Big rebound for Toomey. That's a huge offensive rebound. He's the smallest guy in that crowd. Push off on uh, Cleaver. Number 22, Dodic Roblox comes in for number 31, Evan Block. 
Brandon Elm getting a little bit of a double team going for him. Carthy swings it over to Luke. Tahini oh. a sweet pass in there to Roblox for two. Weaving people, wow. Very impressive. That's the thing with Tahini. He, he doesn't necessarily score as many points as some of these players on Hazlitt does, but he gets those passes and he gets he gets loaded with assists. You know, Tahini being also a high school quarterback, starting quarterback, that, you know, that vision has something to do with it. Being able to see those tight passes and finding the right one at just the right moment. Now with the ball to Roblox. Driving back to Tahini. Oh, air ball. Luke Sleeper with a rebound, and he passes out of, out of bounds trying to save it. Although he didn't, he wasn't able to maintain possession with, of the team with that uh, hustle, but it does show that he's out there trying to make plays, trying to get it going for Hazlitt. Uh, that's still a great play. Oh, we got Kodet, Lewis, and Ellen Boss coming in for Williamston. Yep, this is Lewis with the ball right now. Ooh! Falls up the two. Very nice fadeaway there. Double team on Allen. Trying to make something corner. happen. That was a great defensive possession by Williamson. Able to trap our best player in the in the corner right there. Yeah, very Nowhere nice for him to go. Full court press by what has it. Starting to happen. Boss. Riley Lewis over to Paul. That's Kodet fouled. And that's on Roblox. That's his second. Kodet shooting two. Let's see if Williamson can stay perfect on free throws tonight. This is the first one. And we got Redmond coming in for number 22, Roblox. Yeah, they're going to want to sit him down. They want him picking up any more unnecessary fouls. And this is both. That was a good rebound by Redmond. Here's Sleeper for two. Off the mark this time. It's going to be has a ball off the rebound of number 21, Evan Boss. It's a good lob pass into Redmond. To Haney with the ball screen. Allen for three, not able to hit it. With the rebound, though, to Sleeper. Nails it. Sleeper's in the double digits now. He's at 11. There's Lewis trying to set it back up. Slowing it down a little bit. Here's Toomey. Wasn't sure what happened there, but looks like it's a foul on uh, 21, Owen Boss. Illegal screen, that's what the call was. McCarthy with the ball, trying to make some. Sleeper, Sleeper red hot tonight. Into Redmond, out to Sleeper. Jumper. Long two-pointer. It's a good rebound by Pearl. Over to Toomey. Oh, good block by Sleeper. I think Sleeper's averaging like two, three blocks a game. Yeah, with his height, you know, you hope so. As it not having the best defensive game of their life last week, so you know maybe hoping to rebound a little bit. 
Alouz with the ball on top of the arc. Quick jump shot. And nails it, making it a 26-29 game. Has it up by three. With two minutes, let's see if Williams can make something happen in these next 2.30. Here's Sleeper. Looking for something. Allen uses Tahini's ball screen. Not able to hit the three-pointer, though. And one. That's Coda. He has the chance to tie the game up now. Fantastic drive with such force. You know, it's hard to even, you know, not cause a foul there if you want any chance of blocking that. Somebody notices Kodak did miss his first two, so let's see if you can put this one away. Tie the game up. Off the mark this time, but rebound by Williamson. Trying to put it back. Another rebound. Another block by Sleeper. Block finally steals it. He gets fouled, fouled. by number 32, Kodak. Yeah, he's not happy about that. And I don't blame him. Looked like he got all ball on that. Looks like Toomey's going to put some pressure on Allen. Allen with the ball. Two minutes remaining in the half. Has it up by only just one. Sleeper, nice drive in. Oh, very nice put away off bank shot. Right on... Right on top of the, the free throw line. Very nicely done. Lewis dribbling it down. Good move. He's driving. Three men on him. Ambitious, ambitious attempt, but you know, trying to make something happen for this Williamson squad. He got fouled though by McCarthy. He's going to be shooting two. Very good free throw shooter, Lewis is. Makes the first one. Five for five on free throws. Now we got number 13, Evan Harden, coming in for number 25, McCarthy. And this is Harden's first entrance into the game. Lewis, perfect from the charity stripe tonight, six for six. Sleeper, stuck in the paint. Harden for three. Trying to make a, a difference right off the bat, and nice rebound there. Sleeper in. And right on top of the free throw line, very nicely done, nice jump shot there. Williamson needs to do something about Sleeper. Sleeper has 15 right now. Just under half of Hazlitt's points. That's Lewis with a long three there. Very ambitious. Under a minute now for Hazlitt. Bring the ball up. Oh, That's a steal by Cleaver. He gets the and one. Oh. Foul on Harden trying to make, make the block there. I mean, it, it was a good idea to, to uh, try and foul him there, make him earn it at the free throw line, but you got to make sure that he misses it. Yeah. If it's going to be a foul, you have to make sure it's it's a foul that's going to stop the shot. There's Cleaver. And he ties the game up. 45 seconds left. The score is 33-33. to 33. Allen going down. Double teamed. Allen gets fouled hard. It's a foul on number four, Frankie Two. 30 seconds left. Looks like Hazlitt might hold it for the last uh, possession. Trying to make something happen. This is blocking the elbow. He double dribbles. Now the Williamson crowd seems to be getting into it. 
Let's see if that has any effect on this game later on. Basketball is a game of momentum. Yeah. And Williamson definitely is gaining that momentum right now. Now we have number five, Paul Fiero, coming in for number 13, Evan Harden. Eight seconds left. Lewis with the ball. Trying to make something happen. And he couldn't finish it. In the halftime score, we are tied up here at 33. Uh, coming up at halftime, we have some features for you about the MHSAA's Battle of the Fans competition as well as some MHSAA features. Your halftime score is 33 to 33. What does it mean to be a true fan? Fan is the abbreviation for fanatic, which Webster's defines as one marked by excessive devotion to a cause or idea. Yeah, that sounds about right. For the last four years, the Michigan High School Athletic Association has scoured the mitten for the best fans in the land. The mission of the Battle of the Fans contest is to find the top student cheering section in the states. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you! Being loud, as you can imagine, is a prerequisite, but first and foremost, it's about promoting positive sportsmanship, student body participation, school spirit, originality of cheers, organization of the group, student leadership, and, oh yeah, fun. We've really found that the the culture is starting to change at schools in regards to sportsmanship around the state. We've got a number of schools that have been involved and they tell us, their administrators tell us just how their hallways have changed, their games have changed. And it's uh, and I think it's because it's become kind of a, a fun and cool thing to do on a Friday night. 
Schools were encouraged to produce up to a three-minute video highlighting their student section. From there, five finalists were selected and a public vote was held on Facebook, Twitter, and the MHSAA Instagram pages. Say cheese! At that point, it was up to the Student Advisory Council and MHSAA representatives to determine where the next BOTF championship banner would reside. The student sections from Yale, St. John's, Dwajak, and 2013 winner Buchanan and 2014 champion Beaverton made the finals. Each had one last chance to state their case. Getting everybody together, getting loud, going crazy all night long, running the skits perfectly, and just doing what we do every day, and yeah, that's win. Basketball team sports, whether we win or lose this competition, it doesn't matter. We help the community and we help the basketball team, and those two goals are done. But a secondary objective would winning that would be cool too. We're back and better than ever. Yeah! Loud. Fun. Enthusiastic. Togetherness. How do you pick just one? Well, you go with the most united. I'm proud to be a chief day. Give me a D. Give me an O! Give me an... Ah, oh, heck, we'll be here all night. Congratulations to the Attack of Dwajak, home of the best fans in the state of Michigan for 2015. knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. The most heart-stopping, game-changing, tie-turning moments in high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. I officiate because it's a great way to stay connected to the sport I love. I officiate because I love to be involved in the sport and it continues to keep me in shape. It gives me an opportunity to be part of the activities as they still go on. Sports were a big part of my life and I like the opportunity to give back and I feel that I can make a difference and be a role model to a lot of young aspiring officials and especially females which we really need. You can be a referee. And we are back here in Hazlitt score 33 to 33. Uh, one thing to know about the end of the second quarter was that Brandon Allen did not have any points in that quarter. In fact, it was Sleeper that was carrying the team for Hazlitt. He uh, put up about uh, eight points there. Yeah, and this just shows, you know, Hazlitt has so many weapons, it's hard, to, it's hard to stop all of them. But on the other hand, Williamson has done a great job shutting them down and getting points off the fast break. Uh, with Riley Lewis leading the scores with nine points, 
you know, it, he's doing a good job there, but, you know, they're also getting points from other players like Cobb. Oh, my man, Luce has 15 points. So we have about 30 seconds to a tip off. Uh, for Williamston, uh, they're shooting 45% right now while Hazlitt's shooting 55%. Um, Hazlitt's three for nine on three pointers while Williamston is two for seven. And a lot, a lot of the shot selection from Williamston has been inside the free throw area, inside the lane. One thing to note is uh, Hazlitt has not shot a free throw yet in this game. While uh, Williamson has gotten nine points from them, a couple of them were in one three uh, three point plays also. Now for Allen, he's only shot three times, or actually he's only made three of his uh, seven shots. So you know that's something to keep in mind. Maybe he's off the mark tonight. While Lewis, he shot a lot more. Wow, he shot. Let's see. He's one for five on three pointers. He shot 11 shots so far, and uh, not to mention quite a few free throws. Yeah, he's six for six on free throws, and here he comes bringing it up the court. This is Cleaver to Cobb. Cobb, good, good handling skills there. Loses it off the dribble, though. Well, he got fouled, though. It's going to be, Cobb's going to be shooting two. He's two for two on free throws so far. Not able to hit that one though. And something to note is uh, after Riley Lewis, we have Cobb. Leading the scores for Williamson with now 11 points. Very well done, you know. That's that freshman doing work. And by the way, this is Williamson's first lead of the night. And Cobb, Cobb with the drive. Again. That's a uh, sleeper on his second foul now. He's got to watch it. Hazlitt cannot afford to lose sleeper, especially with the night he's putting up. Cobb makes the first one. It's now at 11. Off the mark there. Brandon bringing it up. Allen trying to make something happen for this Hasla team. McCarthy for three. Puts it away. And that gives Hasla the lead again, 36-35. He's two for two on three pointers today. Hazel might want to try getting it to him a few more times. To see if yeah, he maybe he can just get heated up in this third quarter. That's Cleaver for two. Very nice drive there, nice finish. Allen down the court. Drive. It's off to Haney. It's going to be Williamson ball. Allen looking kind of frustrated, not being able to get, get points in. He's being guarded heavily. Let's see if he can maybe make something happen this, these next couple quarters. Yeah, he hasn't scored since the first quarter. He's on a little bit of a dry spell. Well, there's Cobb again. Cobb being a big influence this first, first couple minutes of the second half. And that's going to be a Robach's third foul. And that's also Hazlitt's third foul in the, you know, the first two minutes. They're able to get into Cliver for three. Not able to hit that one, but Sleeper with the rebound. Let's see if Allen can maybe put his frustration uh, frustration into something good. Yeah, he saw the little body language that he uh, sent to his coach. And just Haney with the turnover. Lewis with the jumper. Straight through. He's now the highest scorer of the game at 17 points. Out to Sleeper for three. 
Oh, off the mark, McCarthy with the rebound. Not sure what that foul was. It looked like it was a jump ball. It's also going to be foul on number 22, Riley Lewis. That is first foul of the night. McCarthy's going to be shooting two. McCarthy, a very good uh, shooter all around. He's not very big, but he can knock down the three. He can knock down the free throw. He can knock down the short range jumper. That gives him that gives him seven points on the night so far. You put this away, giving him eight. He, just off the mark. Makes it a two-point game, 39-37, Williamson up. Strangely enough, that was Hazlitt's first free throws of the game. They did not get fouled in the shooting motion last uh, half. It's Kodak for two. He's at six. Oh, Cliver, correction. That's Robach for two. Now it's Allen on Lewis. Kodet marking Cobb with the rebound. And makes the it back. Yep. Makes it a four point game. Sleeper throwing it out of bounds. Looks like Riley Lewis is going to try and slow it down a little bit. Maybe eat a little bit of this time off. Although it might be a little bit early to start doing that. Tahaney stumbles into Cobb. Oh, good block by Roll Block there. Allen dribbling down, trying to get, get the counter attack. Yeah, Cobb's got at least two inches on Roll Block, but Roll Block doesn't care. Just went up and blocked that one. Allen for three. Roll Block with the rebound over Cobb. Oh, Allen loses it. Oh, another rebound. And that's Roblox making a difference this quarter. Wow. Trying Roblox to has come out so much more aggressive. Wow. Much different from the first half when we didn't really get to see him as much do his fouls. You know, it's, it's a good ball. sight. You know, something that we haven't really seen from Hazlitt in the first two quarters is this aggression. You know, it, a Roblox for three. Uh, a little hard. He was feeling it. Oh! oh. Sleeper with the rebound. Almost Trying to put it away. Ah. And Lewis with the rebound, dribbling it down. And there's Dodic with the steal just out of bounds, though. McCarthy on Lewis. Oh! That was a good block by, by McCarthy. Allen going down. Jumper off the mark again. To Lewis. Lewis looking to go and up. roll block. Good defense there. This is Dehaney in the corner. Over to McCarthy, McCarthy for three. Ah, off the mark again. Has it having some trouble shooting the ball. Riley Lewis bringing it down. About three and a half left in the quarter. McCarthy on Lewis. And Lewis puts it away. That makes it a six-point game with two minutes left, or three minutes left in the quarter. To Haney. Out to Sleepers. Roblock. Nicely done. Roblock making an impact this quarter. Makes it, making it a four-point game. 41-45. Williamson on top. And as Williamson takes a timeout, we'll take one too. You're watching a Hazel Media production. I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. And we're back here and Dodic Roadlock is the story of the second half. Coming out, he's gotten at least two or three steals. Uh, he's been playing most aggressive out of anybody on the court right now. And uh, 
he's looking to score. Yeah, let's hope he can maybe make a difference this quarter for the Hazlitt Vikings. It's going to be a uh, Williamston ball right now. They're going to be throwing it in. And it seems like Hazlitt's going to have a high court press. And Redmond came in for, it looks like, Tahini. Oh, McCarthy going for the steal. Almost got that one. for a three. And he puts it away. He's making it 48-41 Williamston. He now matches the number on his shirt at 22 points. Allen trying to make something happen again. Uh, out to McCarthy. To Sleeper. In a Firo. Foul number 23. Uh, Fiverr. Fiverr. We got Block coming in for number 25, McCarthy, and Toomey coming in for number 11, Perel. Sleeper throws it into Fiorillo. Over to Block. Out to Sleeper. Fiorillo should have shot it. Why doesn't he shoot it? Allen looking to drive. He gets fouled. No shot on the ground. Allen, a great free throw shooter. My bad. No, no free throws. It's going to be inbounds. Nope, on the ground. Redmond on the inbound. Poor pass there. Easy pick for Cobb. A little spin move there. And Allen with the rebound there. Oh, and he loses it. Toomey with the steal. He puts it up, not able to get it, but Cobb gets the pullback. And the pullback. Hess needs to make something happen in order to change the tide of this game. These two teams never want to lose to each other. Yeah, yeah. Hazlitt did beat them last year in the playoffs. Let's keep that in mind, ending their season. Oh, sleeper. The W is not only the thing at stake right now, it's also bragging rights. Most of these kids know each other. We're going to see each other later on. And it's Cliver putting it away, making an 11-point game for Williamston. And that gives him seven unanswered points. Hazlitt having a little bit of a drought here. This is uh, Toomey's third foul. In comes Roblox for Redmond and Ellen Boss. Along with number 44, Nicholson. Roblox throwing it in to Allen. Allen for three, and he puts it away! 44-52, Williamson making an eight-point game. Those are his first points since the first quarter. Lewis coming back in, Farrell on him. Let's see if he can shut him down. Oh, Lewis for a long three, and it's out of bounds. Bounce to Allen. Roblox calling for it. To Roblox in the Firo. And the foul. That's Ellen Boss. That's his second. This will be his first two free throws of the night. And yeah, makes the first one. <laughs> oh, misses the second one, but Rollock with the rebound. Slooper pulls it back out. Oh, Allen misses the pass. Keeps it in. <laughs> nope, that's a travel. It does not count. No foul, no bucket. Just travel on the ground. Williamston ball. Full court press by Hazlitt. There's Ellen Boss. Over to Cliver. Williamson looking to maybe run the clock out here. Get the last possession. 
30 seconds left. Allen on Lewis. Fierro doing a good job on defense here. Now down to 15 seconds. Lewis calling Out for it. Lewis. Allen on Lewis. 10 seconds left. Lewis looking to take the shot. Little block there to stop him. He gets blocked by, I think that was Evan Block that blocked that. Evan Block not able to hit the half court shot. And with the score 45-52 with the Hornets leading. We'll be right back. It's Aslan Media Production. Hazlitt's up, or uh, er, Hazlitt is down, 45-52. Hazlitt has to find a way to get Allen the ball, get him to start scoring some more. He just hit a three-pointer last quarter, but that was the only points he's had since the first quarter. Uh, Sleeper, on the other hand, he wasn't able to score last quarter. He's been the big uh, point scorer for Hazlitt. But uh, last half, it was mainly Dodic Roadblock scoring the points. Also Over. playing great defense. He really has seemed to be a, you know, a lifeline to this half of team to try and get them back in this game. This is Allen bringing it up. Allen going back to happen. Williamston's one and only key point, Stop Brandon. They have done quite the job at it. Holding him to only 10. You know, it's... That's Cliver. Good Not rebound. Make it. McCarthy going down. The block. Block. Nice lay in. That makes it a five point game. 47-52 Williamston. Cliver with the ball. That's your number 11 Perel. 22, Riley Lewis, McCarthy on Lewis. Lewis with the jumper and nails it. Putting it back within seven. He's at 24 points. Allen, favorite, just off the mark. Big rebound for Codette. Lewis with the ball. Codette setting the ball screen. That's going to be an illegal screen. He can't do that. He cannot move his feet. And it's that's be, has the ball. That's also the 16th foul of Williamson. Well, Hazlitt hasn't had a foul since early into the third quarter. So for the rest of the way, Hazlitt will be shooting free throws. Carthy out to sleeper. Block out for the arc. Long three. This is Codette on the breakaway. And one. Foul. That puts the game, if he makes this, a 10 point lead for Williamston. As it has to make something happen quick in order to even stay in this game with such little time left. Going back to what we were saying earlier, knocking down those free throws is so critical. Oh, and Allen! Like Williamson has done quite the job doing that. Shooting about 75% on free throws. Lewis trying to make something happen for this room. And travel on Riley Lewis. Yep, he did a little hop, skip, and a jump right there. Toomey coming in now. He's at three fouls, so he's going to have to be careful. And he comes in for number 11, Perel. Oh, 
why we're able to break that ball screen. But Allen. Allen's so fast. It's gonna be a block on Toomey, that's his fourth. Allen to the free throw line. Toomey's only got one more to go. Allen to the free throw line. Toomey's only got one more to give. So he's out. Allen misses it. Free throws are so critical in these games. Yeah, especially this late into the game. You know, you got to be hitting those. Fong, Cliver, Cliver. Just like he's going to the line for two. Luke Sleeper's now at three fouls, and now we're coming into a time where maybe fouls come into play. Cliver will be shooting two. Makes the first one. Makes the second one, two for two. That puts it within 10. Once again, Allen dribbling down the court. To roll block and the sleeper. He gets fouled. Now this is where it matters. He has, a, has to put away these free throws. Now Sleeper, or Sleeper being such a good shooter he is, he should be able to knock these down. That's eight fouls for Williamston. Third on Codet. One and one. And he misses the first one. That is a such a killer on for Hasler. Vikings foul, 22, got it. That's Roblox's fourth foul. If, if he fouls out, you gotta assume that it's gonna just go downhill for Heslet as he comes out of the game right now. McKinney coming in for him. This is McKinney's first appearance of the night. Let's see if he can make a difference for this Hazlet team. It's a 10 point game. Heslet needs to get something going. Can't make their free throws, they're not hitting their shots. Sleeper, Sleeper with the block. Got that big block right there. Allen double teamed. Triple teamed. And he loses it. Allen may be doing too much right now. Cliver not able to get the fast break. It's going to go to Hazel there. Off the rebound. Out on Williamson. Allen here. To McKinney. McKinney puts away and one. You can see that emotion in his face that he hit that. Yeah, maybe he's just what this Hazel team maybe Hazel needs to get back into this game. He needs to get this this uh, three point play though. Maybe change the momentum. McKinney oh, misses it, but Sleeper with the rebound. Oh, in the block. That was a massive block by Cobb. That's his height, you know, maybe having a couple more inches on Sleeper, which gives him that advantage. Sleeper has done that to many people this season. Cobb gave him a taste of his own medicine right there. Sleeper on the inbounds to block. Block pump fakes. Poor pass by Block. It's an eight point game. Hesley needs some quick stops now. Lewis with the crossover. This is Cobb driving in. A little dish over to Tooney. He's not able to hold on to the ball though, and it's going to be Hazlitt going the other way. Go, Mike. Go, Mike. Allen trying to save some time to block. Block for three. Uh, just off the mark. Rebound by number 23, Cliver. He's looking to push. Holds up though. Lewis for three, long three. Oh, in and out. That's Nicholson, a six foot seven junior. Uh, Sleeper with the, or, I mean, my bad, McKinney with the miss there. Has it just having some trouble putting away these shots. Coach Smith calling for a full court press on uh, Riley Lewis. Oh, 
Williamson eating up a lot of clock with these quick passes. Try to cop. Good move there. That makes it a 12-point game. Williamson on top, 63-51 with 3.20 left in the game. Cobb now is 17 points. Sleeper, Sleeper for three. three. Ah, off the mark. It's not looking good for this Hazel team. That's Nicholson with the big rebound. Cobb with the pullback. Makes it a 14-point game. Williamson on top. That's going to be a timeout for Hazlitt. And as they take a timeout, we'll take one too. You're watching a Hazlitt Media production. The most heart-stopping, game-changing, tie-turning moments in high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. And we are back. The score is 65-51 Williamson's lead, and it's looking like Williamson's going to pull away with this one. Yeah, I don't know if Hazlitt has enough left in the tank to even come back from such a, such a big lead with such little time left in the game. Just under three minutes left in this game. You gotta assume that Chris Smith is telling their team not to give up. In comparison, Williamston has two players with at least 19 points or more. While Hazlitt, their lead scorer is Sleeper with only 15. Now it's gonna be Hazlitt with the ball. Hazel seems to be having some trouble stopping Williamston in the paint. The rebounds by Williamston, the putbacks are just a little bit too much for Sleeper and McKinney and Roblox in there. Especially Cobb having a tremendous game. Allen for three, and he puts it away, making an 11 point game. That's just what Hazlitt needed to get to get that momentum sparked that. again. Full court press for Hazlitt. Cobb with the ball. Cobb has been a big factor. Corral with. And Cobb again. Allen with the ball. Trying to make something happen for this Hazlitt team. Oh. And he loses the ball out on Hazlitt. He just ha can't shut down Cobb. These quick passes Lewis. from Williamson is just destroying this uh, full court press for Hazlitt. Lewis trying to do something fancy there. Almost loses the ball. There's a 13 point lead for Dehaney the Hornets. playing close D. In the top. Oh, oh, and he loses it. That's going to be a push on Tahaney. It's his second. There's a chance to make it a 15 point game now. Barry's the first one. This is the second one. Allen going down quick. Minute 50 left in the game. We're trying to do a little bit too much there. And he loses the ball for poor pass. I feel like Allen is just trying to do too much right now. Yeah, I mean, he needs to find his uh, teammates who are making their shots and taking their routes right now. Yeah, but with only a minute 30 left in the game, I think Hazlitt just doesn't have enough to even put up a fight with, with this much left. All momentum going Williamson's way. Riley just wasting the clock. Lewis gets blocked by Roblox. Allen for three. 
This is a rebound by Sleeper. Oh. One minute, six seconds left. Paul Fiorillo coming in for Hazlitt. Evan Block coming off for a Five for three, and he puts it away. And with that three, that's four for Carell. Oh, my bad, Carell, not five. Haney goes baseline, dishes it over to Roblock. He goes up for two and gets it. Oh, it's going to be too little, too late. It's Codet for two. Allen for three, we're all, way off the mark there. 15 seconds left. So looks like Williamson is just going to hold it up. And our final score is going to be 73 Williamson, 56 Hazlitt. Our lead scorers of the game was Riley Lewis with 24 points and uh, Cobb with 21. For Hazlitt, it was Sleeper with 15, and Roblock with 14, and Allen with another 15 points. This has been a Hazlitt Media production. This is Connor Clifford saying goodnight for me and my partner, Torsten Hall.